Hello, my lovely friends. Welcome back. So today we are going to be revising the rules of the road. Okay. I realized that there are some of the most important stuff that I did not cover. Um, or maybe I did not talk about in the previous video or in their video where I talk about the rules of the road. Okay. So we're going to start reading here. Okay. That's what we're going to start reading. The rules of the road are set in place to regulate traffic and ensure safety. These rules are compulsory and compliance with these road traffic laws greatly reduces the possibility of accidents, injury or deaths on the road. Okay. So let me do this quickly. Sorry. Switch off this. Okay. Sorry for that. So now, it's very important that you comply with the rules of the road. And then, on your exam, on your test, the, uh, the question will come and say, what is the most important rule of the road? What is the most important rule of the road? And then you're going to answer. You say, the most important rule of the road is that you must always keep left. You must always keep left. That is the most important rule of the road in South Africa. Your road is divided like this. Okay. How your road is divided. So then, if you're driving, if you're going there and you're keeping left, and if you are going there and you are keeping left, that means there will, there will be no collision. These cars, I mean, the cars will not collide. Okay. That is why it is the most important rule of the road. And then we come to we come to the general rules. General rules. So it's a general rule that all vehicles must um, must have a clearly visible and valid license disc. And this license disc is valid for 12 months. So what you should know here, yeah, note the license disc is valid for 12 months valid for 12 months don't choose 24 months on your exam choose 12 months right and then we have what we then call the following distance the following distance so they say maintain a safe following distance as part of maintaining a clear space around your vehicle maintain a safe following distance as part of maintaining a clear space around your vehicle Okay, so um, now look at this. Let's say this is our vehicle A and let's say we have um, vehicle B. Okay, so then we consider this space, this space. We want the safe following They say following distance. You must follow it safely. And you shall not follow another vehicle too close. You shall not follow another vehicle too close. So we need the safe following distance. So the question, when the question comes and say, the safe following distance is when vehicle A suddenly stops and you are able to, you see, you are able to do what? Then you'll be given options so if vehicle a if vehicle a suddenly stops and you are as your vehicle b and you are able to also stop without swerving driving to the side of this car driving to to the side but you are able to just stop here okay then that means you are you are keeping a safe following distance if you are able to do that okay and then in terms of numbers, in terms of numbers, we say the safe following distance, it's two seconds for, um, it's two seconds for light motor vehicles and three seconds for heavy motor vehicles, right? In case they ask you in terms of these, uh, uh, uh numbers. All right. So then you obviously need to increase the distance you increase the
the distance when the visibility is poor when you are traveling in wet conditions uh, when you are traveling fast when carrying a heavy load when traveling on a loose surface then you need to increase the safe following distance okay the reason being is that when you are traveling in wet condition when you are traveling in wet condition it takes longer for a vehicle to stop so if you are following the i mean another vehicle with a distance which is normal it might take longer for you to stop without you having to swerve or bumping into the car okay and also when you are traveling fast takes longer for a vehicle to stop when you are carrying a heavy load takes longer for a vehicle to stop and then when you are traveling on a loose surface now let's go to the mirrors okay so ensure that all all mirrors are adjusted correctly so that you have a clear view if you have to adjust the mirrors you may only do this when the vehicle is stationary so you must make sure that you can i mean your mirrors are adjusted and you have a clear view you can see the cars i mean you can see the side of your vehicle and the back of your vehicle so every five to eight seconds glance in all the mirrors to check to check the situation behind or to the sides of the vehicle when approaching a potential hazard check in the mirrors in case you need to signal a change in direction so when you are approaching a hazard you check in the mirrors do i need to signal because maybe there might be um there might be a vehicle that has maybe turned to to the next lane or maybe try to avoid um whatever situation that is happening so you always check your mirrors and then we have a blind spot blind spot so before changing direction you turn your head to the appropriate uh, side to check in the areas that are not visible in the mirrors those areas are referred to as blind spot so look at this small uh, illustration small small this one um look talking about the blind spot this is your vehicle okay so your mirrors this mirror will show you here and then this one this side will show you here and then the one which is in your windscreen will show you here okay but you will not see this using your mirror you cannot see a vehicle here or whatever object but this area you cannot see it using your mirror so then what is it that you then have to do for you to see this you you must look you must turn your head to look to look through the window you you don't just like you don't take your head out of the window you just turn so that you can see what you i mean the area that is not covered by the by the mirror all right and then we have the maximum speed limits okay remember we said we are just doing a revision because i i feel like there are things that are very very important so these are maximum speed limits all right so roads in urban areas 60 roads uh, outside urban areas 100 freeways 120 goods vehicles with mass exceeding uh, 90 kgs uh, i mean 9000 kgs is 80 and then taxis or buses is 100 okay now we get to driving on divided roads i'm just gonna read through this one and pass quickly i'm just gonna read through and pass here when a painted marking or physical barrier divides a road always stay on the left of the division you are on i mean you are only allowed to cross this division if there is an opening or uh, uh, or space allocated for this action okay it is a rule violation to drive across a solid dividing marking you may only drive across a broken dividing marking to overtake another vehicle or make a u-turn yes and then overtaking do not overtake if overtaking is prohibited by a road sign or marking 
Do not overtake a vehicle that has stopped at a pedestrian crossing. When overtaking ne, a vehicle on the same direction on a narrow road, pass right and keep a safe following distance. So you overtake on the right and then you must make sure that you then keep the safe following distance. Do not drive on the right hand side of the roadway in the face of oncoming traffic. So don't drive facing oncoming traffic. Uh. Uh, do not drive on the shoulder or verge of the road when overtaking. So when you are overtaking, you don't drive um, you don't drive on the yellow line or on the white edge marking. okay? Do not overtake on a blind rise curve or any other area where your view of the road ahead is limited straightforward straightforward and then we come here overtaking on the left if it is safe to do so you may overtake on the left when now you must know this you may <clears throat> you may overtake on the left this is important you may uh, you may overtake on the left when the vehicle ahead of you is turning right or has indicated to turn right the vehicle should be turning right or has to indicate that it's turning right in order for you to overtake on the left you overtake on the left when the road is a one way okay you overtake on the left when there is wide enough for two or more lanes for traffic moving in the same direction you overtake on the left when you are instructed by a traffic officer. When you, I mean, when you're overtaking on the left, do not cross the yellow left edge line. Okay? Now let's move on to passing oncoming traffic. I mean, you may not pass onto oncoming traffic. And then when you are being overtaken, when you are being overtaken, move over safely to the left to allow other vehicle or other vehicles to pass do not accelerate until other vehicles or other vehicle has passed you right and then we come to being overtaken on a freeway if the driver behind you indicates his desire to overtake by flashing the headlights signal to move over if it is safe to do so and you must not hog the right lane uh it's supposed to be a lane do not hog the right lane even if you are traveling at the designated speed limit so you don't just say but i'm traveling at the designated speed limit i mean the speed limit on the freeway is 120 so you don't say but i'm traveling at 120 why does this person want to overtake me no if the if the person behind you indicate the his intention to overtake you move over to the left i mean move over to the left lane and then allow the person to overtake you road shoulders you may not drive on the shoulder of the road to the left of the yellow edge line or to the right of the white edge line you don't drive there but there are exceptions you may drive on the left of the yellow edge line to allow another vehicle to overtake if it is a single lane roadway um, if it's in between sunrise and sunset, if it won't endanger any road users or property, if you can clearly see any person or persons, vehicle or vehicles for at least 150 meters ahead. And then, uh, my friends, we have dedicated public transport lanes. Do not drive in a lane dedicated for public transport or rapid transport vehicles from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. Except during public holidays, right? Except during public holidays um, or unless you are driving the permitted class of vehicle. All right. So, and then we come to traffic lanes. We come to traffic lanes. You may not enter 
or cross a road or traffic lane if your vehicle is likely to cause a dangerous situation or obstruct traffic flow. Do not cross into a different lane unless you can do so without obstructing or endangering other traffic. Straightforward. Then we come to traffic circles, which is roundabout and mini circle. Now, let's start with the roundabout. At a roundabout, you must yield right of way to all traffic approaching from the right unless there is a road sign, I mean, there's a road sign or a traffic officer instructing otherwise. Then coming to a mini circle, at a mini circle, give right of way, I mean, give way to any vehicle that will cross or has crossed any yield line before you. Drive clockwise and not over the marking. So um, any vehicle that passes this line first, this is that's a yield line. Any vehicle that will cross that line first will have a right of way. Okay. Now um, let's move on to the driving signals. You must always indicate your intention to change direction, reduce speed or stop. Indicate clearly to be seen by other road users. So you indicate using indicators, stop lights or hand signals. Okay. And they are hand signals. I'm just going to um, pause a bit so you can check. Okay. These are hand signals. Right, let's move on to turning at an intersection. Turning at an intersection. Do not turn unless you can do so without obstructing or endangering other traffic. Obey yellow mandatory direction arrow markings. These are yellow mandatory direction arrow markings, these ones. Uh, and then you must move in accordance with white marking indicating the mandatory direction arrows. These are the white markings that they are talking about. So these markings, they tell you that you are, you will see these ones, okay? And then we get to turning left. Before turning left, indicate in good time and keep as close as possible to the left side of the road. After turning, adjust your speed to match safely into the flow of the traffic, okay? Now, turning right. Before turning right, indicate in good time and keep as close as possible to the right side of the road. And before turning, yield right of way to any traffic approaching ahead. Before starting turning into a two-way road, cross the center lines so that you turn into the left side of the road. And as you turn, pass left of any traffic island or traffic officer controlling the intersection okay right then we come to the rules with regards to parking always park within a demarcated parking bay and never on a sidewalk if your car is illegally parked a fine will be issued or the vehicle can be impounded my friend emergency rescue and construction vehicles or traffic officers are not subject to these rules if they are being used on duty you may park on the right side of a one-way road provided the outer edges of the right side wheel are not more than 450 millimeters into the roadway okay and then we come to the parking distances guide. Okay. There. No stopping in or on or closer. Okay. Nine meters from a pedestrian crossing. Six meters from a tunnel, a subway, a bridge, a constricted road. Then we come to no parking closer than. No parking closer than five meters from an intersection. 1.5 meters from a fire hydrant um, on either side of it. Um, one meter from the road edge outside an open area unless it is a demarcated parking bay. Other no parking places. In any no stopping area. In parking bay reserved for exclusive use of 
uh, a particular class of vehicles or vehicle um, where you would obscure a road sign on a pavement or sidewalk across a private or public vehicle entrance uh, over the actuating mechanism of a traffic light in an urban area parking your car by the robots uh -uh. no 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 um and then within the outer edges of the curbside wheel more than 450 millimeters into the roadway um in an urban road that is less than 5.5 meters wide unless it is a one-way road on a traffic island or pedestrian mall or lane now um exclusive and then we have the exclusive use lane i mean exclusive lane um ambul a is for ambulance b for buses l for loading blah 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 blur okay <laughs> then we move to uh stopping on a road you may not stop on the road unless you are instructed to do so by a traffic officer or road sign uh or to or to avoid an accident and then we have other no stopping places you you are not allowed to stop next to or opposite an excavation if this obstruct traffic flow excavation it's an excavation that is on the road not allowed to stop in a tunnel subway or a bridge on the right side of the road facing oncoming traffic next to or opposite another vehicle where the road is nine meters wide within a railway reserve or i mean at a level crossing where you would cause an obstruction or danger to the traffic on a painted island or on a freeway and then we have compulsory stops it is compulsory for you to stop if you are directed to do so by a traffic officer, road sign, traffic light, or farm animal. But obviously, a cow cannot ask you to stop, so it will be headed by someone. And if that person or when that person uh, asks you to stop, you should stop. For pedest you are I mean it's compulsory for you to stop for pedestrians on or entering a pedestrian crossing on your side. And it is compulsory you must stop if you are involved in an accident. Right. So, pedestrians right of way at a pedestrian crossing. When a pedestrian crossing is situated next to a traffic light, they must cross according to the signal on the traffic light. Drivers must yield right of way by slowing down or stopping for a pedestrian who is on or entering a pedestrian crossing on your side do not overtake a vehicle that is stopped at a pedestrian crossing pedestrians do not have the right to enter a pedestrian crossing suddenly so that an approaching vehicle has to stop suddenly and unsafely pedestrians should cross the road at crossings only or at a distance more than 50 meters from the crossing okay then we come to the rules with regards to towing. The distance between the two vehicles may not exceed 3.5 meters. If it is more than 1.8 meters, there must be a clearly visible red flag tied to it. A licensed driver must control the towed vehicle um, unless a controlled towing device tows the vehicle. The towed, um, the towed vehicle must have efficient brakes unless towed by a dropper or a tow bar. When towing, the maximum speed is 30 kilometers per hour unless you are towing by means of, of a solid bar. Excuse me. You may not carry passengers in the towed vehicle. Towing on a freeway without a solid bar is unlawful. If, this, if the freeway has a minimum speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Remember, uh, if you are towing a vehicle without a solid bar, you, you must, um, your maximum speed is 30 kilometers per hour. So now, if you are towing without 
a solid bar then you cannot go on, on the freeway because minimum speed means that you must drive over the speed indicated then we come to light motor vehicle and heavy motor vehicle lights when using any light or heavy motor vehicle on a public road all lamps must be undamaged unobscured properly secured and capable of being lit at all times okay the headlamps rear lamps and number plate lamps must be kept must be kept lit supposed to be lit must be kept lit during the time period during the period which is between sunset and sunrise that is at night my friend at any other time when due to insufficient light or unfavorable weather conditions persons and vehicles upon the public road are not clearly discernible at a distance of 150 meters provided that these provisions shall not apply to a motor vehicle which is parked okay parked how parked off the of the roadway of a public road in a parking place demarcated by by uh, 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 an appropriate road sign within 12 meters so now this is important i wanted to highlight the important things here 12 meters from a lead street lamp lead supposed to be lead lead street lamp illuminating the road on which such a vehicle is parked okay and then we have main beams and deep beams okay so the main beams what is important is that the main beams should should cover 100 meters this is what is important for your test main beam should be 100 meters and deep beams should be what 45 meters finally is can you say main beam funny can you say 100 meters deep beam it can you say 45 meters all right right so and then um we come to the parking lamps the parking lamps a vehicle may not be driven on a public road with with only the parking lamps lit while such vehicle is in motion rail lamps you may not drive or ride any vehicle on a public road without a rail lamp um emitting a red light fitted stop lamps or brake lights you may not drive a light motor vehicle or motorcycle on a public road unless it is fitted with stop lamps at the rear when in use. They must emit a red light, which must be greater than that of the light emitted by the rear lamps and must be visible in normal sunlight at a distance of 30 meters. At a distance of 30 meters. To a person of normal eyesight okay 30 meters and then we come to number plate lamp number plate lamp you may not drive a motor vehicle on a public road unless it is fitted with at least one number plate lamp at the rear illuminating the number plate every letter and figure um, of such plate must be visible from a distance of what 20 meters by a person of normal eyesight then my friend we come to fork lamps fork lamps so we have front fork lamps and rear fork lamps no vehicle may be driven on a public road while any fork lamp fitted to such vehicle is lit except in conditions of poor vi uh, visibility caused by snow fog mist dust or smoke then we come to the stop lamps a motor vehicle may not be used on a public road if it is fitted with a stop lamp which can be so adjusted as to enable a beam of light to emit from it and be deflected in any direction okay and then motorcycles motorcycles light um you may not operate a motorcycle on a public road unless all lamps fitted to such motorcycles are undamaged, properly secured, and capable of being lit at all times. 
when riding a motorcycle on a public road the headlamp must be lit at all times during night and day the motor vehicle headlamp must be lit at all time at all times <laughs> okay here is what is not allowed on on the freeway animal drawn vehicles bicycles motorcycles with an engine capacity of 50 cc or less electric powered motorcycle with a mass of 230 kgs or less uh for example used by people with disabilities um motor tricycles or quad bikes tractors unless used for roadway i mean for road works uh pedestrians are not allowed on a freeway unless they are in a in an area demarcated for stopping or parking uh, animals are not allowed on a freeway unless inside a vehicle or within an area demarcated for stopping or parking you cannot stop on a freeway except when you are instructed to do so by a traffic officer or road you uh, i mean or road sign or when you are in an area demarcated for stopping here is what is also important that hand signals may not be used on a freeway unless in an emergency these restrictions do not apply to maintenance or construction workers emergency crews and officials on duty learner drivers on freeways a learner driver may drive on a freeway only if a licensed driver accompanies them so after getting your learner's license you will be allowed to drive even on the freeway but you must have a properly licensed driver with you okay now vehicles causing excessive noise you may not operate a vehicle that is too noisy or has accessories that are too noisy my friend and no person shall use the hooter of a vehicle except when such use is necessary for the grounds of safety of safety sorry you may not use a light motor vehicle on a public road unless it is equipped with a warning device hooter which is in good working order when used capable of emitting a sound which is clearly audible by a person of normal hearing from a distance of 90 meters you see i'm highlighting the important stuff 90 meters sirens or warning device that play a tune may not be used in private vehicles okay hindering or obstructing traffic you may not hinder or interrupt the free flow of traffic on a public road my friend you may not do so you may not do that it is not allowed and then general duties of uh driver and passengers the driver must be seated to maintain uh, control of the vehicle and have a clear view of the road. As a driver and a passenger, you may not travel backwards further than is necessary. You may not follow another vehicle too closely. You may not allow another person or animal to interfere with your control of the vehicle. You may not allow another person to steer. You may not leave the vehicle unattended without setting there parking brake or using alternative methods to prevent the vehicle from moving <clears throat> you may not sorry guys <clears throat> you may not allow any portion of of you or your passenger or, or your passenger's body to stick out of uh, the vehicle except for hand signals uh, you may not run the engine if it is giving off excessive smoke or fumes you may not run the engine whilst fuel is being pumped or if the fuel tank cap is off you may not leave the engine running if the vehicle is unattended you may not deposit fuel grease oil or any other flammable matter or refuse onto or alongside of the road you may not allow passengers to get on or off while the vehicle is moving. You may not drive, pull or push a vehicle onto a pavement. 
you may not fail to give way to emergency vehicles. Okay? You may not operate a communication device, cell phone, or two-way radio. You must use a hands-free or headset. <laughs> abandoned vehicles. Vehicles abandoned on a public road or in a public place may be removed and impounded. The owner is liable for all the cost. The vehicle may not be sold to settle the cost. So now, here are abandoned vehicles. Uh, abandoned vehicles are vehicles obstructing other traffic or standing in a way to cause potential danger. Uh, when a vehicle is, is left more than 24 hours in the same place on a non-urban public road, when it is left more than seven days on a public uh, urban road or testing station, when it is found on a public road without a number plate or a false number plate, when found without any means of identifying the owner, when parked on a no-stopping or no-parking area such will be uh, considered as abandoned vehicle or vehicles okay <clears throat> damage to public roads you may not drag or spin the wheels of a vehicle on the surface of the road you may not use shocks or shoes between the wheels and the road then we come to tires uh, the thread pattern must be clearly visible and have a depth of not less than one millimeter across the entire tire width and circumference. Motorcycles under 50 cc must have a thread pattern visible on at least 80% of the thread width. Okay. And then the side walls must not have deep cuts and inner cords should not be visible. The tires, I mean, the tire should not be on such a state of despair or condition that may cause damage to the road or be a danger. Motorcycles may not be fitted with, with rethread tires. Buses and taxis operating with a license issued by Department of Transport must be fitted with uh, commercial steel radial ply tires and steerable uh, wheels must be fitted with anti burst stabilizer devices. Okay, then we come to seat belts. <laughs> seat belts are compulsory to wear when in a moving vehicle, and then you must know that a child is defined as a person between the ages of 3 and 14 years, except when such when such person is taller than 1.5 meters, then he or she is regarded as an adult. Irrespective of age, a person older than 14 years is, con I mean, is defined as an adult. And then helmets. You may not ride a motorcycle or be a passenger on a motorcycle or in a side car attached to a motorcycle on a public road unless a protective helmet is worn and then convoys vehicles may not travel in a convoy over weekends long weekends or two day holiday 25 and 26 december during 6 p.m um, and night before the weekend holiday holidays start at 6 a.m the morning after the weekend or holiday <laughs> okay animals on public roads animals that are not under the control of someone are not allowed on public roads or in a place th that they may stray onto the public the people controlling animals on a public road must carry a warning at least 150 meters ahead and beyond Sunset, the warning, I mean, sunset to sunrise, the warning that they must carry is a red light. Uh, but between sunrise and sunset, it, they must carry a 300 millimeters square red flag. If there are less than 10 animals, 
the I mean only one light or flag is required. And then emergency triangles. At least one double sided reflective triangle, SAPS approved, must be carried at all times. If the vehicle is broken down or stationary on a public road, the triangle must be displayed at a distance of 45 meters from the rear of the vehicle. And then you have unauthorized use, I mean unauthorized use of a vehicle. No one may touch, occupy or temper with a vehicle without the owner's permission. Do not touch my car without my permission. It is illegal to change a vehicle's engine or chassis number without prior written consent of the registry authority. Pedestrians' legal rights. If a vehicle collides with a pedestrian, the driver will be prosecuted, irrespective of who had right of way. Okay. And then we have racing and sport. You may not conduct a race or sport meeting on a public road without the consent of the MEC or relevant authority, relevant local authority, or with a modified vehicle that does not meet the specifications of the manufacturer's SAPS. Then we come to additional rules for motorcycles, motor, uh, uh, motor tricycle and quad bikes quad bikes and off-road unlicensed motorcycles are not allowed on public road the driver and passenger must wear a safety helmet motorcycles must have their headlights on at all times day and night on public road both driver and passengers feet must be kept on on the allocated uh, foot rests and seats sit astride the saddle okay and then you may not carry a passenger if the engine has a capacity of 50 cc or less not more than two people may travel in a motorcycle and not more than two adults may ride in a side car right now, no person, animal, or big object may be carried in a motorcycle in a manner that obstructs the rider's view or ability to control the motorcycle. Motorcycles must, I mean, motorcycles must ride in single file on the road. Okay. Um... Only one motorcycle at a time may overtake another vehicle traveling in the same direction. Okay. Um, I mean, traveling in the same lane. Always keep at least one hand on the handle at all times. Always keep at least one hand. Okay. And then ensure that all wheels stay in contact with the road at all times a motorcycle must have one number plate secured on the rear a motorcycle may not tow any kind of vehicle and then carrying loads on motorcycles uh, okay projection limits not more than 600 millimeters to the front uh, uh, axle not more than 900 millimeters to the rear axle, not more than 450 millimeters to the side of the motorcycle uh, uh, wheels, not more than 300 millimeters um, of the side, I mean, of the side of the side car wheel. These provisions do not apply to mirrors or crash bars. No person, animal, or object may be carried in front of the driver on the seat uh, I mean on the seat fuel or handlebars okay these numbers for motorcycles are very 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 important 
k and then carrying loads on a motor car no part of of a load may touch the the road surface the load must be securely fastened or be inside the vehicle without hindering the driver's control or view of the road ahead then you must know these ones the load limits loads may not extend more than 300 millimeters beyond the front and 1.8 meters beyond the rear 4.3 meters high from the ground um on on goods vehicles 2.5 meters wide 2.6 meters for goods vehicles that are 12,000 kgs or more abnormal loads require permission from traffic authorities any fitted brackets 150 millimeters beyond the vehicle widest part and then you have safety markings loads that project 150 millimeters or more to the side of the vehicle must be marked with what daytime must be marked with 300 millimeter square red flag attached to each corner front and rear of the load at night white reflectors on each corner of the front red reflector at each corner at the rear and yellow reflector on the sides loads less than 600 millimeters that project 300 millimeters or more beyond the rear of the vehicle must be marked with at daytime a single 300 millimeter red red flag attached uh, to the rear of the load at night um, at night white one red reflector at the rear of the load okay right um and then we come here accidents 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 in the event of an accident involving a vehicle person animal or property you stop the vehicle immediately check for any injuries provide any assistance where possible to the injured provide your name address and address of the vehicle's owner of the vehicle's owner and vehicle registration number um report the accident to the police within 24 hours not 24 days not 12 days not two days within 24 hours okay <laughs> and then in the event of someone being killed during the accident call the emergency services immediately ensure that all vehicles involved are not moved without a traffic officer's authorization unless the vehicles are blocking the road or standing in a way to cause potential danger only after their position have been marked on the road or on the road surface reckless negligence or inconsiderate driving you may not drive in a manner that disregards the safety of the i mean of the other road users or property intoxicating liquor and narcotic drugs no person shall drive a motor vehicle on a public road while the concentration of alcohol in a person's body is 0 0.05 grams per hundred mils of blood or more 0 0.02 grams per hundred mils of blood or more in case of professional driver and those are the rules of the road so thank you so much for tuning in uh, see you next time